Hello class, welcome to the lecture for 13-2. Here we have polar equations. All right, that's a polar bear, but you know what I meant. We're, we're moving on into the world of R's and thetas. This is very exciting. These are much prettier graphs than the stupid line and y equals x kind of stuff like that. These, I think, are much more fluid and beautiful and have a lot more of the true nature of math in them as far as being beautiful to look at and interesting to think about and fun to imagine. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk through how to graph polar equations by hand. We're going to have a whirlwind tour of polar shapes, polar graph shapes, and then we're going to talk about converting polar equations back into rectangular or Cartesian. So first up, we need to talk about polar equations and how to be able to do them by hand so that we can understand what the calculator is doing. These four equations that we talked about last time are the bread and butter. You got to know these. You got to imagine that polar is about the angle and the hypotenuse and that rectangular is about the legs of a right triangle. That the x and y is the straight up and, and straight left kind of way of looking at things versus polar is to turn the angle, walk out the, the r. So we're going to use these four equations all over the place. Now, when we want to do something uh, simple, we have to think back to, okay, how did we start learning how to graph in rectangular? How did we learn to graph ordinary simple equations back in the day? Well, when you had something very nice and simple, like y equals 3, you said, okay, that means I'm looking for the points where y is equal to 3 and x can be anything. That's fair enough. Now we're moving on to more complicated stuff where we're not doing x and y, but how are we going to be able to do this with r and theta? What do we need to think about um, in order to be able to graph one of these kind of equations? All right, here's a simple looking equation, r equals 3. That's pretty straightforward. What are we going to do? Well, just like when we had y equals 3 and x could be anything, r equals 3 means the radius is 3 and the x and the theta can be anything. So, all right, so here's some polar graph paper. And if we start off with r equals 3, so there's 1, 2, 3. So we're out there. There's uh, 3 comma 0. And boy, I guess theta could be anything. We haven't specified what theta is. So what if it was 15 or 30 or 45 or 60 or 75 or 90? You get the idea. If the radius is 3, then that's talking about all these points here where the radius is equal to 3. And theta can be anything. Well, that's pretty straightforward. What about theta equals 150? Put a highlighter on this one in your notes because this is the one that will screw you up on the test because you can't put it in your calculator. You are not able to graph this on your calculator. There is no theta equals. It's all r equals in your calculator. Okay, but just like every kind of line, you know, x equals 2. Well, when you go to graph x equals 2, y can be anything as long as x is equal to 2. And here, r can be anything as long as theta is equal to 150. So there's 90 and 120 and 135 and 150s over there. Okay, so here's radius 1, radius 2, radius 3, radius 4. But don't forget about negative. So then negative 1 and negative 2 and negative 3 and negative 4 and any of the ones in between, including fractions and decimals. So then this is the line theta equals 150. So it's, it's not different. It's, not, it's identical to how we would graph points in rectangular. In rectangular, you would pick some x's plug them into your equation, that would help you figure out some y's, you'd get some dots, you'd play connect the dots. So if we want to graph r equals 0.5 theta, well, you can see that if we pick 0, we get 0, and as we turn around and around, we're getting bigger and bigger uh, r's because theta is going up. Now this is definitely one that you want to graph in radians is that th angles go up too slowly in degrees. But if you did this in radians, then you would see a graph like that. As you turn and theta gets bigger and bigger and bigger, 
then your R is getting bigger and bigger as well, and it's just a spiral. It'll just slide out. Now, when we go to try to do these um, by, by hand, you, there's only a few parts of sine and cosine and these other normal trig functions, functions used in polar graphs that have nice values. So let's look at this next one. If we're going to try to graph if we're going to try to graph r equals 4 sine theta, then what are some nice values that we could calculate for ourselves? Well, sine of 0 is nice. Uh, when, excuse me, when theta is equal to 0, then r is equal to uh, 0. So that's going to be a point on the, the pole. And if, let's see, when is the next time that sine is nice? At 30. At 30 degrees, it's half. Half times 4 is 2. So at 30 degrees, I need to be out there at 2. And then it's root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2. But at 90 degrees, it's 1. 1 times 4 is 4. So I need to be up there like that. And then it's not nice again until uh, 150. But at 150, it's half. Half times 4 is 2. So that's uh, over there. Like that. All right. So if I'm if I'm turning and I'm slowly sweeping out like that and then sweeping back in, there is my horrible hand attempt at graphing y equals four sine theta. All right. So you can put that in your calculator and then double check yourself. It's a circle. What about cosecant? What about r equals to cosecant theta. Well, cosecant is just 1 over sine. So again, I'm going to use the nice numbers that I know for sine. Well, at uh, 0, then uh, 1 over 0, oh shoot, that's undefined. So that won't work. But the first nice one is at 30. And so at 30 degrees, sine of 30 is half. 2 over half is 4. At 30 degrees, I need to be out there at 4. So that's up there. And then the next nice coordinate for sine is 90. And sine of 90 is 1. 2 over 1 is 2. OK, so that's doable. And then at 150, it's half. 2 divided by half is still 4. So that's going to be over there like that. And then at 180, we're undefined again. And that's not going to help. But let's see here. What happens if I go past that? Well, if I go past that to 210, then I get a negative half, and I get negative 4. And so rather than going down there, I end up just back at one of the points that I've already done. So that's not super uh, helpful. But you can see that if I just connect the three dots that I have, we've got a straight line. And that's a bit surprising that we can end up with a straight line in polar. But we'll see in a bit when we get to conversion from one system to another that it's actually not surprising at all. So general principles for how to graph things. You get to use your calculator, but there are a few that aren't um, obvious how to get them in the calculator. That we pick some x's and we get y's. That's what we did in rectangular. Well, in polar, we're going to pick some thetas and get some r's. Very, very similar kind of operation. And the calculator will help us, but we can still find individual spots on the graph, individual points, because we know how to plug in. All right, part two. We are going to have the whirlwind tour on the magic school bus of all these different functions. This is something that you don't need to be an expert on. You just need to broadly recognize these five different kinds of shapes. You don't need to be able to create them or generate them. You just need to recognize what these different shapes are. Some of them you've seen before, most of them you haven't. But so that's why this is here to help you orient towards new shapes in polar. All right? So spirals, we already talked about. If you've got a r in terms of theta and there's no trig function, 
this is just going to spiral out of control. This is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as the angles get bigger and bigger and bigger. These are spirals. Nothing magical there. Next up, here's a fun French word, a limousin, and the little sedilla tail, sadia? I don't know how to say that. Um, the tail on the C just makes it an S. And these are just sort of dimpled or um, little kink or an inner loop on a circle. These are just sort of crazy circles. This is sort of a bigger category that circle fits in called limousons. And so you can get fun little shapes where they're just sort of dented a little or kinked or they full on have a loop on the inside. Those are my favorite. Um, these, uh, the, the one in the middle is called a cardioid because it looks like a heart, but they can be done with either sine or cosine and you'll just rotate them 90 degrees, the difference between sine and cosine. So you might pause the video, make one in your calculator, see what it gets. Next up, there are roses. These are just um, flowers with petals. And there's an interesting behavior that if you plug in, uh, so the, the number out front, the A in this equation, is just the radius, the size of the petals. And then the N, the multiplier on the angle, is kind of the number of leaves. If you plug in an odd number for N, then it will be the number of leaves. If you plug in an even number, then it gets multiplied by two, and that is the number of leaves that you will get. You don't need to be able to make them, you just need to recognize them when they happen. Here are the interesting ones that we saw just a moment ago. They were kind of surprising. These are the lines. And so if you use cosecant or secant, you will get a line. Um, the other way to get lines is to do theta equals a particular number. So watch out for both of those, especially the theta equals, because those are the ones that you can't put in your calculator. And then there are lemniscates. So these are the infinity symbols. And again, they are a little bit difficult to put into your calculator, but they can be done. They have r squared equals some number squared times sine or cosine of two theta. And you're gonna have to put square roots in your calculator, and then your calculator is gonna freak out, and it's gonna not get the shape to be exactly right, because the square roots become tiny little numbers and it gets lost in the details. So watch out for that. Make, if you see a gap in your calculator window graph, you might become suspicious. So that's a lemniscate. And then now's the point where you're like, whoa, that was way too many shapes, Murph. I'm overwhelmed. Do not go hog wild on this. You don't have to go super crazy. You just need to be able to recognize the shapes in your calculator. Or in the case of certain lines, you need to be able to know what to do with theta equals three pi over two kind of stuff. You can put it in your calculator. You get to have your calculator on the test. And the calculator, if you look at the table, will get you particular values out of it. So you need to know how to be able to use your calculator to make the graph and to get particular points on the graph. So let's, we'll be sure to practice that in class. Now, lastly, this is so many things in this section. This is overwhelming. We have to convert as well. No, I'm just kidding. Conversion is not anything magical. That these points all are... Uh, these equations are all able to be converted using those same four uh, formulas that we already learned. That you can take something we've already done and do it back into rectangular pretty straightforward. So let's look at a couple of these here. So first of all, we had that uh, weird line that we did, r equals 2 cosecant theta. What in the world is cosecant? Well, it's just uh, 1 over sine, so it just is sign in the denominator and now we look at this and we say boy which of these four equations four conversion equations am i close to being able to use well i really wish that the r and the sign were next to each other because that's the equation for y so i'm just going to multiply both sides by sign or you can call it cross multiplying r sine theta equals two and r sine theta, we said, is the definition of y. So that's just y equals 2, which is why we got 
that line looking like that earlier. Next up, we've got r equals four sine theta. Hmm, that's not something totally obvious. The r and the sine, I wish they were next to each other. So that's not, I'm not able to convert those because multiplying both sides by sine will make a mess. But if I multiply both sides by r, if I multiply both sides by r, then I'll get r squared over here which is one of our equations, and I'll get four sine theta, which is one of our equations, uh, uh, r sine theta. r sine theta is y, and r squared is x squared plus y squared. So now I've converted it into polar. If you're really ambitious, you could say, well, I would like to get the, um, the y squareds, the y's together, and if I want to complete the square, this is all bonus. If I wanted to complete the square, I would need a four. And so then that's y minus two squared and is equal to two squared, which happens to be a circle with a center at uh, zero, two, and a radius of two like that. So that part was not necessary. If you stop right there, uh, I'm more than happy that you've converted it into rectangular. Converting it to rectangular means you've gotten rid of all the r's and thetas and you've made it into only x's and y's. So here's a really hard one. This is like harder than the one I, one I would give you on the test is to say, let's convert uh, r cotangent theta, r equals cotangent theta. What in the world is cotangent? Well, cotangent is 1 over tan, and boy, do we have, yeah, okay, so there's a couple ways that we could do this. We could say that that is equal to 1 over tan, and then tan theta is equal to y over x. So that's x over y, and now we really need r to be squared. So we'd have to square both sides, and then that's x squared plus y squared. So that's one way that you could get there. Another way you could get there would be to remember that cotangent is cosine over sine, and there we need to multiply top and bottom by r in order to get what we want, and that's x over y equals r, and then we're back where we started having to square both sides to get to use the r squared equals x squared plus y squared equation. So either way, you've got rid of the thetas and the r's, and you've got uh, x's and y's only. So that might be a bit of a surprising equation. You've never seen anything like that before. And of course not. You've never seen any shape like this before. That's why we had to invent polar. It's something that's very straightforward to enter in as a polar equation, but it's not at all clear uh, to look at that horrible x and y mess what that was going to be.